Greetings. This is a Vodafone Shure Signal Mark III. It's a femtocell, which is for if you've got a poor mobile signal in your house, uh, poor Vodafone mobile signal, I should say, uh, you can plug this in, it plugs into the mains, it plugs into the broadband, and it forms a small um, 3G mobile network in your house. It's quite a short range, I think it's only about 10 meters from the one, one of these. But, and you, you uh, I think it'll support either up to four or up to eight calls at once. I think it's either four or eight, and you can register up to 32 phones to it because it won't just act as a cell for anyone passing by. It's a cell just for um, the phones that are registered against it. Obviously, you wouldn't want to use it, although it is 3G. I don't think you'd want to use it for um, for data, just in case they happen to charge you for using data on your own home broadband through one of these, um, when you've got Wi-Fi that's available. But uh, for making calls, at least, it should be, you know, it'll be better than having no bars at all on your phone. So um, before I plug it in and try it, let's take a look inside the box. Now this is a second-hand one from work. Uh, so most of the packaging is missing. There's a, uh, in fact, the manual is missing as well. There's a declaration of conformity. There's a scrawny little four-core uh, Ethernet cable. And being four-core, that means it's only um, 100 megabit. It won't do gigabit. And there's the the sure signal itself. Uh, so a quick look around the outside. There's just a label on the back, giving the uh, giving the model number and the MAC address and serial number. On the front, this shiny silver bit actually has uh, LEDs behind it. You can see there are three LEDs. And if I phone up underneath it to, um, to light it up, hang on. You can see there's a, an internet connection. There's a signal, not a real signal strength bar, it's just a, that there is signal. And there's a... Um, a phone uh, indicator that uh, I believe that means it's, there's a phone connected to it, that means it's actually running, and that means it's connected to the internet. On the bottom, then, we have a connection for your internet uh, broadband router. There's a PC connection as well, so you can actually pass it th pass through, again, albeit on uh, 100 megabit. And that's it from the outside. Oh, there's, a, there's another light there as well. We'll see what that does when it's actually powered up. But first of all, because I don't want to get a belt off any sort of live circuit, this has been off for months and months and months. So I'm going to open it up and we'll take a look inside before plugging it in. That's the screws out. There's actually two self-tappers and two machine thread screws. All, all torques. And it also clips together. It's got these clips at the side here. So you've got a pinch at the there and on the other side there to get it to release but then it comes apart and that is what's inside and if I can get these pins, can I get these pins out? Right, I can't get the pins out because they're, they're soldered in place on here and these are actually I think these are, yeah, these are riveted through to there. So the connections, the plug and socket connection is straight through. These just go straight onto there and out. And this just taps off. But I can move it to one side like that and take a look at what makes it tick. Well, there's not much to see on the bottom of the power supply. It's just a small bridge rectifier. But on the top, it's quite interesting because you look at them, you look at this, and you think, "No, oh, there's an opto isolator there." Except it's not. That is a tiny switch three 12 watt switch mode power supply controller. Sits on the high side and controls the whole thing. There's a little opto isolator there, an 817D, which connects across to the low side. And then we've got these other chips here. It seems to require quite a lot of voltages because this one here is a TPS65251, which is a triple buck converter, which does, it can do three amps on one of its outputs and two amps each on the other two. And this 
is a G5794, which is another switch mode regulator, and that's another 2 amp one. So on this little connection here, there are going to be quite a few voltages. Although I'm not sure if it needed a 24 pin connection to get them all across. Over to the low voltage board now. And I don't know what this is. It feels quite cool to the touch. And whether it's some sort of heat sink or whether it's some sort of RF gubbins, I don't know. I'm not taking it off to find out. It's pinned down and the pins are soldered through. And I'm going to leave it there because I actually want to be able to use this thing. This is HY27UF 082G2B, which is a 2 gigabit or 256 megabyte NAND flash. So it's got plenty of storage space for the program. And over on the other side then, we have, start of the show really, is a BCM 61600KFB1G. And this is actually, as far as I can tell online, I can't find a data sheet for it, but it's referred to basically as a femtocell system on chip. So that controls pretty much the whole shooting match, that's all it's for. This is a KSZ8863MLL, which is a three-port fast Ethernet switch. So it connects to these two, plus an Ethernet connection into the circuit. What else do we have here? There's a H5 PS1G63JFR, which is one gigabit of, or 128 megabytes of DDR2 SD RAM. There's a... That one there is a PH507, well that's what it's marked up as, it's actually a TCA6507 I2C and SM bus LED driver, so it can control the brightness of the LEDs, uh, leaving the rest of the system to go on and do other things. What else do we have? There's a weird chip there, that one is a 3C PPS, is that the one? Yeah, a 3C PPS123882 885AA, and I can't find any details on that anywhere. Uh, it's got a bit more luck on that one, which is an NEC 2 and 8 3, which is a, a, four, a single pole, four throw switch um, in a chip, in a little 16 pin chip, for half a, me um, half a gigahertz, right up to two and a half gigahertz operation. And it's designed for cellular use, so it's right at home in this thing. A uh, little chip just above it, which is a TF12 3315-1798, same again, can't find it. And the last one of all is this, which is a Max 2250, and that's a femtocell transceiver. And that's basically everything there is. It's, um, the board is made by Handstar, which is the same name as you'll find in a Home Hub 5. And yes, Handstar and Hands G and Handsfree, they are all related. It's all the same firm underneath. So that's a femtocell. The sure signal. Uh, these are the antennas here. It's also got an antenna port there for plugging in. So you can connect an external antenna, but it's got this built in anyway. Let's put it together again and um, see if it works with my phone. And it may not work with my phone because my phone didn't come from Vodafone. It actually came from China. And also this Fentocell actually works with the uh, with the two point, uh, it's 2.1 gigahertz it claims to be, so it should work. Uh, it should be on a band that my phone works on because mine's a Chinese import. It doesn't recognise all of the um, the bands that are in use in the UK. There'll be more on that in a separate video when I finally edit it together. But it may be that it's got to come from Vodafone in order to actually have the facility. I don't know if it requires extra software on the phone to deal with working with femtocells. I've got my network cable ready to go, so I shall plug that in. And plug the whole thing in. Let's see, we have just that light on to start with. Oh, and the, uh, we've got some activity on the bottom there. No idea how long these take to start up. But while it's starting up, I'm going to swap the SIM cards over in my in my phone so that the my works Vodafone SIM is the primary SIM because my phone is 4G and 3G on one of the SIMs, but the other one, I, uh, the second slot, I think, is only 
2G. Is the camera? Yep, the camera's picking that up. We've got the internet connect uh, light is on. Well, pulsating on. That's that LED driver doing its job. It's probably been told to um, to vary the dimming cycle of that without act without the processor having to do it all for it. My Vodafone signal, as typically as it does around here, gone off. I got reasonable signal on O2. Vodafone has gone. This thing is still pulsating. I'll check online and see what the see what the manual says. I've just read online that they can take several hours to sort themselves out, so I'll uh, I'll leave it on overnight. It didn't take as long as I thought to kick in. It's got the red light and two white lights now, which means everything's good. Uh, unfortunately, this phone doesn't want to connect to it. Now, it's either because it hasn't got the app to connect to it, because it's not a, um, it can come from Vodafone, or it just doesn't like the band because this is a Chinese phone. So I'll try the SIM with another phone. And this phone is actually coming up with a 3G signal, which, and you can see it's got full bars as well. So this one is recognizing it. Now it's not come up with the phone icon on there, and that's because it's not in a call. If I make a call, if I try ringing, uh, ringing the office, for example, you can see this time, as it's trying to ring, the phone is actually showing on the display there, indicating that it's actually in use, it's being used as a sure signal. If I hang up, it goes back off. So the SIM does work, it just looks like it's not compatible with either my phone or my phone doesn't like the band that this is on. Because as you can see, back on this one, we're back on 2G, and if I try to make a call, I don't expect that to light up. So as you can see, it's not using it. So it looks like it'll work, but with the right phones, and this isn't the right phone. So uh, never mind, it'll go back to the office, like nothing had ever happened, someone else can use it. Um, hope someone finds this interesting to see what's actually inside it and how they work. Um, thanks for watching.